Praise the Lord. If you are still there, I said, Praise the Lord. Let's rise up as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great things you are doing in every life, every heart, on everyone in this retreat. We thank you, Lord, because as you speak to us and you remind us of what Christ has done, you're also reminding us of what Christ will do. As we look back to the cross, we're looking forward to the crown. And we pray, Lord, you help us so that everyone will be ready in Jesus' name. We do not know when the trumpet will sound. And when the midnight cry will come. But whenever it is, Lord, today, or this week, or next month, or the coming year, or the coming decades, whenever it will be, Lord, we pray you make us ready in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray all our services, all our labors, all our endeavors, all our commitment, consecration in the kingdom will not be a waste in Jesus' name. Make us ready. Keep us ready so that when that hour will come, we'll be able to answer that question, are you ready for the midnight cry? Your children will be prepared. And we will not miss it on that day in Jesus' name. Open our eyes of understanding now. As we look at your word, strengthen your people. Let the joy of the Lord be their strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. God bless you. You can sit down. Just like you heard from the choir now. Asking us the question, are you ready for the midnight cry? Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 6. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. In verse 13. Watch therefore, for ye know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. It talks about the bridegroom coming. It talks about the Son of Man coming. The bridegroom is Christ, is the Savior of the church. And is the head of the church. Is the bridegroom of the church. And the church is the bride. And the Lord Jesus Christ himself told this story. Gave this parable. So that all these people, you and I, will be ready when the Lord shall come. And he tells us from that Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 1, he says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Jesus Christ spoke about his coming quite a number of times. And then he reminded the people that there is a preparation to be made so that you and I can be ready. There are people that think that because they are Christians, because they come to church, when Christ comes, automatically they will go. But Jesus said it takes preparation. It takes readiness. It's more than profession that I am of Christ. I belong to Christ. That's why he gave this parable. He said in verse 2, 
and five of them were wise and five were foolish these were people waiting for their lord these were not seen as outside these were people in the kingdom in the kingdom of heaven these were people in the visible church in the local church in the local churches in the churches all over the country in the churches all over the continent in the churches all over the world five wise and five foolish and then it goes on to say in verse 3 and they that were foolish took their lambs but took no oil with them they took their lambs they knew christ was coming they knew they wanted to be ready but they didn't make enough preparation then he tells us in verse 4 but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs the lambs were burning and shining and yet they said we're going to get enough oil extra oil should the bridegroom tarry so we can have all it takes for our lambs to be burning while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him even though it appears delayed one day christ will come the bridegroom will come and then it says it will be a midnight cry and a cry will go forth behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs and the foolish said to the wise give us of your oil for our lambs are gone out they discovered too late that the lambs did not sustain them. They discovered too late that the oil was not sufficient. They discovered too late that the lambs had gone out. And so they, they knew that they must have oil put in their lambs. The light must be shining. If they were going to meet the bridegroom that comes, they couldn't meet the, the Lord coming in darkness. And so they had to get oil. But seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. There's a time of opportunity. A time you can pray. A time you can call. A time you can prepare. A time you can get ready. Seek the Lord at that time. And now it was too late for them, but the wise answered, saying, Not so. Not so. Salvation is personal. Not so. Sanctification cannot be shared. Not so. Holiness is not transferable. Not so. The oil will not be sufficient for you and I. Not so. Readiness is a personal issue. Not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather. You know where to buy. You know where to get it. You should have done it before this time. Go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves while the wench to buy. The bridegroom came while the wench to buy. The bridegroom came. Hold on. There are different kinds of oil. 
there is, a, there is a kind of oil that will run your motorcycle. That oil will not fly an aeroplane. There's a kind of oil that can run your motorbike. There's a kind of oil that will help and burn your stove. That oil will not help you to fly. There's a kind of oil that is ordinary. There's a kind of oil that is super. That is extraordinary. There's a kind of oil meant for the rapture. There's a kind of oil that is meant to take you to meet the bridegroom. Just go into the backyard there and say you are getting the oil that will help you to meet the bridegroom. Take care. Take heed. The day of grace for the Gentiles, that day of grace is here now. When the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ rise up, and we which are alive were caught up together to be with them in the clouds. The gate will open then for the Jews. For the Gentiles, the period of grace. And the period when any Gentile can just call. That period will not be like this time. And so after that trumpet has sounded, after that Christ has come, after the believers have been taken away in the rapture, when the Antichrist begins to rule, when the pastors have gone, when the preachers have gone, when the church has gone, when the people saved, sanctified and ready, when they have gone, when there will be no counselor, when there will be no preacher, when the Antichrist will not allow freedom of worship, when you will need a mark before you buy, when you will need the symbol and the, of the Antichrist of the beast before you even eat, and when it will be very difficult to live on this earth, when the trumpet has sounded, and the children of God, when they have gone, and at that time, for your children to go to school and for you to get a job, they'll not just be demanding tax clearance, they'll be demanding the clearance of 666, the mark of the Antichrist. If that is the time you want to go and buy, if at the time when it is easy, at the time of the retreat, when everybody, thousands of people are gathered together and they are praying and they are saying, Oh God, I need salvation. Oh Lord, I need transformation. Oh Lord, I need restoration. Oh Lord, I need holiness. If at that time, when you can pray, when we can pray, when there is unity, we are praying together. If at that time you cannot pray. If at that time you cannot call upon the Lord, if at that time you cannot be saved, if at that time you cannot be restored, after Christ has come, I'm going to get oil. I'm going to get salvation. I'm going to get restoration. You might find it's not easy to pray like that at that time. There will be no freedom of gathering like this at the time of the Antichrist. There will be no time and there will be no permission to have land and have a campground at the time of the Antichrist. There will be no law that will permit you of the freedom of worship at the time of the Antichrist. You have waited too long. The bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, the foolish virgins, the other virgins, the careless virgins, the other virgins, the unprepared virgins, the other virgins, the wise virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. They knew his name. They didn't have his nature. 
They knew his name. They were not obedient to him. They knew his name. They didn't get ready. Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, I know you not. The conclusion, verse 13. Watch therefore. Watch therefore. Theologians tell us no need to watch. Everybody is saved. Everybody coming to church will make it. Preachers tell us no need to watch. Once you are saved, you are forever saved. Erroneous teachers tell us no need to watch. Raise up your hand. You are born again forever, forever. It's there. They tell us whether your prodigal son, prodigal daughter, prodigal member, prodigal father, prodigal mother, prodigal preacher, doesn't matter. Everybody will make it on the final day. That's what they say. But Jesus said no. There are people who will be foolish. There are people who will be wise. And he said, if you're going to be wise, watch. Watch therefore, for ye know not, neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. We're looking at this message, the wise and the foolish virgins. The wise and the foolish virgins. The Lord is coming. I said, the Lord is coming. And he wants you, wants me to be ready. Virgins, who are those? Virgins, who are those? We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're reading from verse 2, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Who are the virgins? Those who follow Christ. Those who believe in Christ. Those who are saved by Christ. Those who belong to Christ. Those who hope to reign with Christ. Those who say, we're saved. We're serving. We're worshiping. And we belong to him. Chased virgin unto Christ. Revelation chapter 14. Reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 14. And we're reading from verse 4. These are they which are not defiled with women. For they are virgins. Who are the virgins? The undefiled. The people who have been cleansed, washed, purged, purified to serve the Lord and to be completely separated and set apart unto the Lord. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These are redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. See the virgins, the people that are converted to Christ, and the people that are giving to Christ. Who are the wise virgins? These who believe in Christ. They also believe in the second coming of Christ. And they are watching. They are watching. They do not live careless lives and feel. I'm saved. I'm saved. They are not the people that do not know the reason why they are saved. They are the people that know Christ is coming. And because Christ is coming, they need to watch so that they can be ready. Luke chapter 12, reading from verse 35. Luke chapter 12, 
reading from verse 35 let your loins be guarded about and your lights burning continually burning burning is in the continuous tense not just that your light shone yesterday or that your light is shining today but it keeps on shining and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding that when he cometh and knocketh they may open unto him immediately your light shining getting ready that any time you hear the sound of the trumpet you wouldn't have come back into darkness you'll still be walking in the light living in the light philippians chapter 2 reading from verse 15 philippians chapter 2 verse 15 that she may be blameless and harmless the sons of god without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation i'm not going to shine as lights in the world those are the wise virgins the community is dark the community is defiled the community is polluted but you have the grace of god in you saved sanctified and you are shining as light in the crooked and dark world holding forth the word of life that i may rejoice in the day of christ that i have not run in vain neither labored in vain the light shining get you ready your ears chilled to heaven your mind centered of on heaven your affection set on things on high that when he comes you will not be at a lost in uh, you'll not be lost in uh, revelation chapter 19 revelation chapter 19 verse 7 let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife and the bride and the virgin has made herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints and it says unto me right blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the lamb and it says unto me these are the true sayings of god you will be ready i said you will be ready we're talking on we're speaking on teaching on the wise and the foolish virgins you understand now who the virgins are you understand who the bridegroom is christ jesus the lord and you understand that christ is coming and because he is coming is calling you to readiness and is calling you to preparedness three things we're going to look at number one the preparedness of wise faithful virgins the preparedness of wise faithful virgins number two the profession the profession talk of mouth the profession empty testimony the profession of wanting foolish virgins lacking wanting incompetent not ready unwise the profession of wanting foolish virgins number three the perdition the perdition 
of unwise, foolish virgins. I pray you'll be ready. Somebody there said, I pray you'll be ready. Number one, preparedness. Number one, readiness. Pre number one, the preparedness of wise, faithful virgins. We're coming to Matthew chapter 25. In Matthew chapter 25, the very words of Christ, I'm reading from verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. In verse 2, and five of them were wise, and five of them were wise. Part of them were wise. Some of them were wise. Think about that. It's not everybody that calls on the name of the Lord that is wise. It's not everyone that says, I know the doctrine. Christ is coming. Not everyone is wise. Five were wise. Part of them wise. Some of them wise. And then he tells us in verse 4, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. The wise, those who are getting ready, they have lambs, they also have oil, sufficient oil, extra oil, more than enough oil to keep the lambs bunny. And then in verse 7, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. The wise had oil to supply. Every time temptation comes, grace is there to stand, to be sustained. Every time a trial comes, courage is there to keep their faithfulness unto the Lord. Every time there's a pull from the world and from the devil, there is the stamina. There is the backbone to say, I will stand. Every time a challenge comes, these wise virgins, their minds are set. The vision set. Their gaze set. Their focus intact. Distraction might come. But they keep on looking, looking for the Savior when he will come. And nothing derails them. Nothing distracts them. Nothing discourages them. The lambs were trimmed. Verse 9. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us. These are people that are looking at each. I will not allow a child, a friend, a companion, anyone to make me lose my grace. And to make me lose my chance. And to make me lose my readiness. I will not allow any situation to make me lose my preparedness for the coming of the Lord. Lest he misses it and I miss it. Lest he doesn't make it and I don't make it. I will not fight on anything. I will not quarrel about anything. I will not drag anything with anybody. If he has lost grace and is ready to fight, I'm not going to say, you know how to fight. I know how to fight you. Uh -huh. It means that there will be no grace in A. There will be no grace in B. Knowing how to fight is not enough. There are things you need to know. That there are things you can do which you will not do. Because your mind is focused on the coming of the Lord. That's why it says, when these foolish virgins, 
Let's share together. Let's have it together. Let's live together. Let's be careless together. You have much oil. We don't have any. Can you pour something here? I only have enough for the coming of the Lord. I don't have enough extra. You only have enough salvation, enough sanctification, enough holiness, enough purity, enough conviction to carry you through. Not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. Verse 13. Watch therefore. Wise virgins, those are the people who are watching. Wise virgins, those are the people who are ready. Wise virgins, those are the people examining themselves. Am I ready if the Lord should come today? Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. It tells us that we have to be wise, wise, wise. Matthew chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 24. Matthew chapter 7. Wise virgins. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24. Therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine what did Christ say? Repent. Except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. Whosoever carry the saints of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man. What did Christ say? Ye must be born again. What did Christ say? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. What did Christ say? Watch. And pray that ye fall not into temptation. What did Christ say? Watch and pray that ye may be accounted worthy to escape the things that are coming on this world and to stand before the Son of Man. What did Christ say? He says, Iniquity shall abound. And the love of many shall wash cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and towards them, I would liken him to a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. The wise, the wise, they're waiting for the coming of the Lord. And they will not give up their conviction. They will not give up their watchfulness. They will not give up their courage. They will not give up their stand. They will not give up. Their consecration, commitment to the bridegroom, to the Lord, to the Savior. Hebrews chapter 10. In Hebrews chapter 10, here we're reading from verse 36. Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 36. For ye have need of patience. That after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise those wise virgins were patient they just kept on trimming their lamps keep the lamp burning keep the light shining pouring oil pouring oil pouring oil waiting patiently and they didn't say we've been waiting he has not come we've waited he has not appeared look at this in verse 37 for yet a little while and ye that shall come will come and will not tarry. 
yet a little while, yet a little while, yet a little while. A day is gone, the wise virgins, they take inventory. What happened today? Do I have any grudge? Any bitterness? Did I miss my way? Is there something for the blood of Christ to cleanse? Is there something, carelessness, tripping in and coming in that I need to take back to the cross? They're watching and they're looking at their lives because they know, who knows, it may be tonight. It may be tomorrow when there is no moment to make any cleansing possible for yet a little while. And he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we, the wise, but we, the so are preparing, but we, those who are looking for the bridegroom, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. These are people who are holding on to their first love. Revelation chapter 2, reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 2. Reading from verse 4. Here it says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. You know those preachers that tell you, it doesn't matter. You'll be saved, you're forever saved. You loved the Lord before, you still, you still love the Lord only. It's not to the fervency of uh, the past, the faithfulness of the past, the loyalty of the past, and the burning passion of the past. And you say, Christ is coming for everyone, not only sanctified, holy, purified people. Look at this, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Because thou hast left thy first love, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove the candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. When the candlestick is removed, no light again. No light again. No oil, no lamb. And you want to be ready. Look at verse 25 of that chapter 2. But that which, that, that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Hold fast till I come. Matthew chapter 25. These wise virgins at the Lamb. Matthew chapter 25. These wise virgins at the oil. Matthew chapter 25. We're looking at verse 4. And the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. The wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. What did Jesus mean here by the lambs? What do you need to possess that shows you have the lambs? We're looking at Second Samuel for the lambs. Second Samuel chapter 22. And we're reading from verse 29. 2 Samuel chapter 22 verse 29 For thou art my lamb, O God And the Lord will lighten my darkness The people who have come to God Come ye out from among them And be ye separate, says the Lord 
and ye shall be my sons and my daughters and I will be your God the people that belong to God God becomes their land God is their father and God is their upholder and God is their helper and God by his grace is their sustenance in Psalm 119 Psalm 119 the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs their lambs Psalm 119 verse 105 verse 105 thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway these are the people that will not play with the watch of god these are people that will not give up the watch of god these are people that hold on tenaciously to the watch of god to enlighten them to direct them to show them the way they must go to produce more faith in them and to lead them to loyalty and faithfulness what's the lamb god himself what's the lamb is watch that he gives us proverbs chapter 6 verse 23 proverbs chapter 6 verse 23 for the lord for the commandment is a lamb the commandment is a lamb and the law is light and the reproofs of instruction are the way of life these are people that hold on not only to the promise of god but to the precepts and to the commandments isaiah chapter 62 isaiah chapter 62 we're reading from verse 1 I say, 62, verse 1, For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. For Jerusalem's sake will I not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burns. These are people that are saved and they hold on to that salvation. These are people that belong to God and they will not let go of their hold on God. These are people that have the word of God and they hold on to the word of God tenaciously. For the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs now the oil what's the oil because he's talking about the foolish not having enough oil and the wise having enough oil in exodus chapter 27 and reading from verse 20 exodus 27 verse 20 and thou shalt command the children of israel that they bring the pure oil, olive, beating for the light, to cause the lamb to burn always. The oil to cause the lamb to burn always. What's that? The grace of God in our lives that keeps the Christian life shining always. What's that? The help of God, the salvation of the Lord that is there, constant, and keeps the light shining always. We're looking at Psalm 45. Psalm 45, verse 7. In verse 45, verse 7, Thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness therefore god thy god has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows righteousness is there 
that gives you victory that gives you joy and the joy of the lord is always there the fruit of the spirit is love joy and peace the spirit of god is there and the spirit of god grants you that oil of joy oil of gladness we're looking at for samuel chapter 16 the oil for samuel chapter 16 and we're reading from verse 13 for samuel chapter 16 verse 13 it says in verse 13 then samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren and the spirit of the lord came upon david from that day forward poured oil on him symbolizing the spirit of god and the spirit of god came upon him continually now from that day forward what's the oil the spirit of god the spirit of god is the one that convicts of sin the spirit of god is the one that tells us of her conversion born of the spirit and born of the water of the world the spirit of god the spirit bear witness with our hearts that were children of god romans chapter 8 we're looking in at verse 9 romans chapter 8 verse 9 for we ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwell in you now if any man hath not the spirit of christ is none of his what's the oil the holy spirit the holy spirit that abides that dwells in the heart of the believer and if anyone has not the spirit of god those foolish virgins the conviction of the spirit left them. The correction of the spirit left them. The consecration by the spirit left them. The courage of the spirit left them. And the constant control of the spirit left them. And now the trumpet sounded. And they discovered our oil is gone. The Holy Spirit was no more present. Like Saul, the Spirit of the Lord is departed. Another Spirit has taken over their lives now. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, is none of his. Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61. I'm reading here from verse 3. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 3, to appoint to them that mourn in Zion, and to give them beauty for ashes, and the oil of joy for mourning. The oil of joy for mourning. They are not mourning anymore because the Lord has given them the joy of salvation and the joy of service. And the joy of the witness of the spirit that they belong to God. And then it says the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. Matthew chapter 25. Here we see the wise virgins. They have the lamb. They have God. They have the word of God. And they have the faith and the power, the courage, the foundation that comes because of that word. And they're living by that word. And they have the spirit of God helping them, breathing on them, lifting them up, encouraging them, and moving them on, moving them forward in the things of the Lord. The preparedness of wise faithful virgins saved by the spirit sanctified by the spirit baptized by the spirit 
Born in by the Spirit. Moving on by the Spirit. Standing by the Spirit. Courageous by the Spirit. Believing and increasing in the things of the Lord by the Spirit. Conscious of the presence of the Spirit upon their lives all the time. The wise virgins who are prepared for the coming of the Lord. Matthew chapter 25, the profession of wanting foolish virgins. Matthew chapter 25, I'm reading from verse 2. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They still bought the name of virgins. Like everybody here bears the name deep alive. Would you know? It's not everyone in deeper life that is deep or that is deeper. But we're all here. That's the visible church. That's the outward church. That's the people who are numbered and named with the church. Because there were wise virgins. Now there were foolish virgins. It tells us in verse 3. They that were foolish took their lambs. They profess they know God because God is the Lamb. They profess they have the word of God because the word is the Lamb. But they took no oil. What's there? The conviction of the Holy Spirit is not there. The conversion by the Holy Spirit is not there. The commitment of the Holy Spirit was not there. The courage of the Holy Spirit is not there. The backbone given by the Holy Spirit so they don't compromise. It was not there. But they profess that they know God. Look at Titus chapter 1. They took their lambs. They took their lambs. They too say, well God, just like the wise virgins. Titus chapter 1 verse 16. They profess that they know God, but in works, they deny him. They profess, well, the lambs too, we belong to God, but in works, they deny him. Being abominable, disobedient, and to every good work, reprobate. You know, the lamb, thy watch is a lamb to my feet. And then it says, it's light. To light in my pathway. Second Timothy chapter 3. In Second Timothy chapter 3. Look at verse 5. Having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. Foolish virgins. They have a form of godliness. The outward shell. Of godliness. They seem to have. The outward picture. Of righteousness, they seem to have, but in the power thereof. Look at verse 7 ever learning. They're learning the word because the word is the lamb. But these foolish virgins, they say, We have the lamb too, uh huh, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning the fight of salvation. They could tell you the steps to salvation. But they are not saved. They have the word. They know the word sanctification. And they could tell you verse. The verse where you find sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. They know the word of sanctification. But they are not sanctified. Ever learning and not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They've heard about holiness. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. But they are not holy. Ever learning and not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's what it's saying. It's talking about the people that make a profession. The foolish virgins. Opportunities are there for them to be saved. They're not saved. Opportunities are there for them to be sanctified. They're not sanctified. Opportunities are there for them to have the grace of God. But they don't have the grace of God. In Isaiah chapter 58, I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 58, and we're reading from verse 1. 
It tells us in verse 1, cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression, their transgression, and the house of Jacob, their sins. Yet they seek me daily. But in verse 1, they have transgression. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and they forsook not the ordinance of their God. They come to this same church. They will not go to another church. They attend this same retreat. They will not go to another camp. And yet, everything they hear does not have any impact in their lives. While they fight him before the retreat, they continue fighting after the retreat. Were they always angry, beating their wives before the retreat? They come to retreat, they continue. Have they been drunk? Do they get drunk? They come to the retreat, after the retreat, they keep on drinking. And do they visit the prostitutes in the, in the places of darkness? They come to retreat, they continue after the retreat. And it says, they're like people seeking the ordinances of the Lord. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take the light in approaching to God. Do they pray in the valley and pray on the mountain top? Yes, they do. But they continue in their own ways. Foolish virgins they are. Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 31. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, foolish virgins, and they siege before thee as my people. And you cannot tell the difference because the siege, as the people siege, they hold the Bible. As the people hold the Bible, they call the name of Jesus, and the rest call the name of Jesus. They come to the camp as the people come. They give their tithes and offering as the other people give. They call the name of the Lord as the other people do. They hear thy words, but they will not do them. For their mouths, for their mouth, they show much love, but their heart goes after their covetousness. That's what he's saying in Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. Revelation chapter 3, we're reading from verse 1. It says in chapter 3, verse 1. Unto the angel of the church in Sunday's right. These things says he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. You bear the name as if you are alive, but you are dead. The profession of wanting foolish virgins. Now the perdition of unwise foolish virgins. The perdition of a wise, foolish virgins. Matthew chapter 25, verse 3. And they that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. No grace. The grace that saves. 
The grace that sanctifies. The grace that sustains. The grace that holds us up. The grace that overcomes temptation. The grace that lives transparently holy lives. No oil wastes them. Verse 11. In verse 11, up to watch came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, I know you not. They knew his name, but he says, I know you not. They know he is coming, but he says, I know you not. They fellowshiped with the wise virgins. They stayed together. They lived together. They knew they were wise virgins. They even asked the wise virgins to give them of the oil. But the bridegroom says, I know you not. They knew that they said the Lord. And he is the only one that can open the door for them. But he says, I know you not. And Jesus said, watch therefore. For ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. The foolish virgins. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Reading from verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 32. And we're reading from verse 6. Here the Lord is talking about those who are foolish. Those are the same people that are unwise. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Those who have not recognized the love of God, that God so loved the world and gave his only begotten son. They neglect him. They abandon him. They do not take the greatest gift he has given to humanity. O foolish and unwise people. Is not he thy father that bought thee? Has he not made thee and established thee? Look at verse 29. In verse 29, oh, that they were wise. Foolish people, oh, that they were wise. And that they understood this, that they will consider their latter end. Who are the foolish virgins? Why did they get destroyed? They didn't think of their latter end. They didn't think of the day of death. They didn't think of the day of reckoning. They did not think of the day when the bridegroom shall come. The day of rapture was not a point of reference in their action. They acted as people of today, as people of the world, as people of no future. They never thought about the future. The wise virgins are the people that make the day of resurrection, the day of rapture, and the day of reckoning their point of reference. If I do that, what will I say on the day of reckoning? If I go there, what will I say on the day of reckoning? If I take that, what will I say on the day of reckoning? If I embrace that, what will I say on the day of reckoning? If I drink that, what will I say on the day of reckoning? The wise people. They have the day of the rapture as their point of reference. But the foolish people, the foolish virgins, do not have rapture, reckoning, rec resurrection as the day of the point of reference. Oh, that they were wise. And that they understood this. That they would have considered the latter edge in Job 
chapter 32, Job chapter 32, reading from verse 8 and verse 9. Job 32, verse 8. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty gives understanding. Great men are not always wise. Great men, they might be wise in taking decisions on business. They might be wise in choosing a profession. They might be wise in making money as for the future, as for the rapture, as for readiness, as for preparedness. Great men are not always wise. Neither do the aged understand judgment. There are people who are very close to the grave. There are people who know by all calculations that no matter what happens, they are now the grave than the cradle. That they're moving on and any time from now, they could leave this world and they never think of what will happen on the day of reckoning. How wise are such people? It tells us in Luke chapter 12, verse 20. Luke chapter 12, reading from verse 20. But God said unto him, Thou fool. God said unto him, Thou fool. This night, Thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be that thou hast provided? At 75, at 80, you want to go back to college. 75 to 80, you want to earn another certificate. And you have not read any book of the Bible from beginning to the end. You have not tried to even read the simple gospel according to St. John. And then at this age, you want to go and earn another degree. How wise. You have not learned only the references concerning salvation. And go to the Old Testament, the New Testament, and just read about salvation. And you want to have another certificate at this age. How wise. You have not learned about the importance, the indispensability of holiness. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. At this age, you are not even finding out. What level of holiness do I need for the day of reckoning? And then you want to travel there and travel there. I want to visit that place and visit that place. I want to see some beautiful sights before I die. How wise. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be better now that you're near the day of reckoning? Sit back. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Think through and come to a logical conclusion. If there's anything for me to have, it is salvation. Sit back and think through. If there's anything for me to pursue now, it is this holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Hey, you're sick. And the doctors have told you that you have just about a few weeks to live. Well, what if that were the truth? What if there's no other escape, no way of escape from this one month ultimatum? Why don't you sit back and then you still go to the mountain? The time you should spend, should it happen that in one month's time, I'll be living. I want to make sure I'm a wise virgin. I have 
the lamb. I have the oil. The day of reckoning is coming. But no, they will not. How foolish that will be. They are not considering the latter end. In verse 20, But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? Fools, foolish virgins that do not consider Second Samuel chapter 3. Second Samuel chapter 3. Verse 33. Second Samuel chapter 3. Verse 33. And the king lamented over Abner and said, Died Abner as a fool dies? Died Abner as a fool dies? There are people that will die in no other way. They die as fools die. Absalom. Died Absalom as a fool dies seeking after the throne that was not made for him going out to war and fighting a battle that he will lose died Absalom as a fool dies there are people that die that way foolish virgins are so fell died that he so fell as a fool dies he joined Absalom and he knew that the anointing was not on Absalom. That Absalom was a schemer. And he left David and he joined. And the counseling he gave. That he gave Absalom, the people rejected. And he knew that he had taken the wrong step. Instead of repenting, he will not repent. He hanged himself. Died a heath of hell. As a fool dies, the people that will die that way, no matter what warning they have, they're like the foolish virgins. Judas is carried. The Lord warned him. The Son of Man will go as it had been ordained of the Father. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Is it I? Is it I? And Jesus said, The man to wait to the person I give this mercy of meat is the man. And then he gave it to Judas. And Judas looked at the face of Christ and said, Is it I? The one that will die. And the one you said it were better, he were not born. Is it I? And Jesus said, yes. He all, all the same, he went out and still betrayed the Lord. And eventually died. Died like a fool. Died. Judas, as a fool dies, the people that will die like that, they hear the warning. They hear the sound of the trumpet. They hear the call to repentance. They will not repent. And they die as fools. And Ananias and Sapphira agreed together. And then they came. He sits all. While the thing remains. Was it not in your power? How is it? You have lied. You have not lied unto man. You have lied unto God. He fell down and he died. He died as a fool dies. And the wife came three hours after she had a chance to confess she had a chance to repent but she did not live a life with the day of reckoning as a point of reference tell me is it so much you have sold the land yes how is it you have agreed together 
to tempt the Holy Ghost and she died. They died as fools die. All the spies that went to the land of Canaan, they came back and they said, here is the fruit. It's as the Lord has said, the land flowing with milk and honey. And Caleb said, let us go up at once, for we are well able. He said, no, we're not well able. He said, of course we are. See what God has done. He conquered Egypt. See what God has done. He opened the Red Sea. See what God has done. He gives us manna from heaven. See what God has done. He's giving us a water from the rock. We can. We are well able. They said no. They died in the wilderness. They died as fools die. There are people that will die drunkards. The people that will die adulterers. There are people that will die adulteresses. Repentance is available. Salvation is available. Heaven is available. And it is easy. Everyone that shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But they will die as fools because they will not make their minds ready. And the king lamented over Abner and said, Died Abner as a fool dies. Make up your mind. How will you die? As a fool or as a wise man? Are you the one that the Lord will say to? What is your lamb? What is your oil? Didn't you hear about that salvation? Didn't you hear that you can come to the throne of grace and obtain help to find help in the time of need? Make up your mind. Will you be a wise virgin? Or will you be a foolish virgin? I will be wise. I will be wise. I will be wise. Rise up and tell the Lord, don't die as a fool. If you live as a fool, you will die as a fool. If you live your life as a fool, you will die as a fool. But the Lord is calling you. And the Lord is saying, when will you die? Repent, turn, make sure you are saved. The foolish took their lambs, lamp of profession, without the real salvation. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. The wise today repent and be saved. Be wise today, consecrate and be sanctified. Be wise today, have the oil of the Spirit in your life. There will be no friction in your life when the oil is there. And there will be no darkness in your life when the oil is there. Be wise, don't be a fool. 